you ever want to know what like Harrison Ford is like, probably in his life, watch that David Blaine Harrison Ford video, where <laughs> David Blaine like pulls a card out of an orange. Oh, I made a and slide. He's just like, get out. Of- oh, well, hello. <laughs> hey. I was going to change the name of a scene, and it accidentally clicked over to the scene. And here we are. Hello. Hi. Well, well, I, I don't know. This is awkward. We're, we're, we're not supposed to start for another couple of minutes. <laughs> No. <laughs> well, according to my clock, we have literally 30 seconds. Wait, no, but I, there was a timer on the screen, and the timer had a specific amount of stuff going t- on. Oh, no. I don't. The timer means nothing. The timer means everything. The timer is it... the things. Well, <laughs> where are the well, things? Well, welcome to 2019, the weekly poll. This yeah. is the new year, and shut up, Joel's thoughts. Oh, oh, I can shut you up no matter what. <laughs> God damn it. What? By, by God, this truly is a new year. He's developed technology to shut me up in my mind. <laughs> Joel just has a nosebleed and then just passes it. <laughs> oh, Neat. The, there are times where my ears will burn when I'm out in a bed. I'm like, I bet Benny's telling me to shut uh, up somewhere in the yeah, world no. right now. It's become a thing. It's become a thing. Uh, yes, guys, this is the Weekly Poll. This is a pop culture podcast that has existed for, what, four or five years now? Uh, in various iterations yeah. on YouTube, on Twitch, on uh, everything else we're doing. We talk about comic books, movies, whatever we feel like talking about for the week. Uh, and we've just existed forever. It's just been around. We've even won awards. I don't know why. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Though I think that the, uh, the the people who gave us the award no longer do the awards. We cr- we, we destroyed the <laughs> oh, awards. Did we? That was they, the end of the We awards. broke the mold. There weren't any this year. <laughs> no, no. Nice. Uh, the two Broke individuals at the bottom the there the from a out. channel called Comic Pop. And Tiffany is a streamer on Comic Pop TV. Uh, Joel yeah. is from a channel called Caped Joel, where he does a lot of things. I won't be mean, Joel. It's a, bet- it's a new <laughs> oh, year, new me. Out. I'm only going to shut you up. New year, Benny. <laughs> nice guy, Benny. The new initiative. <laughs> it's my new initiative. I'm doing this new event. <laughs> I'm doing it. I don't care. I don't care. This patch came out today. I'm playing it. <laughs> right now? Uh, well, I was for the last five hours on stream. Now I'm still playing it. <laughs> That's a hell of a game. It is an, awful, <laughs> it is an amazing game. Uh, but anyway, guys, yes, uh, it's the new year. So we're just going to talk about general New Year stuff, what we talked about last year, what we liked about 2018. Uh, we should probably talk about the fact that Aquaman is the highest grossing DCEU film. You know, Yeah. I think that's a thing. I'm pretty sure we joked about this on other episodes, being like, man, wouldn't it be hilarious if they had a Batman, Superman, Justice League movie that kind of whiffed it, but Aquaman was their big success. I, I think so. Not only did we say that, I think we were also like, I think it might because Aquaman's cool. Like, <laughs> Well, okay, yeah. I do need to ask this. I know we don't ever talk about fuck comic book cast, but Armin must be rolling in his grave like, yes, the world knows how amazing he is. <laughs> I'm was sure he a big Aquaman fan? Was. Oh, it's his it's his favorite. Yeah. He loves oh, is Aquaman it really? and, oh. He loves Aquaman and he loves Conan, so he has two reasons to be super stoked in the last couple weeks. Yeah, so, yeah, new Conan book. Oh, yeah. is there? Which apparently is really good, according oh, to us. Well, here's my question for you guys. Um, so why do you think Aquaman let's start with that. Why do you think Aquaman is the highest grossing film for the DCEU? Like what do you think makes it, it stand new. out? Because it's being compared to Black Panther, it's being compared to Fast and the Furious, yeah. it's got a Pitbull song. I saw that and I was like, wow, this is the meme central of the year. <laughs> uh-huh. Honestly, like, if, if I may, I'll, I'll kick things off. I think that it actually is a multifaceted issue, which, of course, is mm-hmm. like an issue. Mm-hmm. But, like, one of the reasons, I think, is because it had no baggage. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Justice League, sure, but, like, it was... Justice League turned out to be so irrelevant that, like, it didn't even hurt other franchises. Yeah. Which is shocking. Flash. I, I, it's the same thing I said. Like, I still liked the Justice League movie. The problem with the Justice League movie is there's nothing in it that makes you go, oh, my God, it's the Justice League movie. It makes yep. you go... Literally, I can... That was cool. If I may, like, you can sum up Justice League. There's a bad guy. The Justice League show up, and they stop him. Mm-hmm. That is the whole movie. It felt I know, like, like an can... episode of the TV show. Like there was nothing spectacular it and epic. The TV about show it. at least had some like, interpersonal drama. Like <laughs> yeah, and I, I really like the show. Uh, but 
uh, Aquaman had no baggage. So like nope. people were just able to go, I, I kind of know who Aquaman is. I dug him in that movie that I, that like most of us saw, that's it. And so like, I'm in like no, no baggage. So, like with Batman, right? Like people are like, I got to see Batflag. I got to see it in the context of, you know, uh, Christian Bale's Batman and my love of Batman and Michael Keaton. People are still holding torches for Michael Keaton, mm-hmm. Batman, Val Kilmer, and, you know, even the 66 West Batman. Like, there's so much baggage with Batman that, like, even if you made, like, a perfect Batman movie, people would still complain. With Aquaman, there's no context. It's like, he either coming. sucks or he's going to be in this movie. Like, that's literally all you got. He either sucks or he's not. Like, we have no middle ground here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying that in, like, the cultural consciousness. Like, yeah. either he's super friends Aquaman or he's nothing. Like, that's all I know. Well, okay, do you think that, Tiffany, do you think that this is going to change up Aquaman? Like, do you think people are no longer going to look at him as the guy that's riding on those two fish in the ocean just like... No, I, well, here's the thing. I think people who knew Aquaman prior to this movie are always going to think of that no matter what, and then this will also be there. And people have no idea who Aquaman is. This is going to be their touchstone now. I mean, at the end of the day, I think the reason this movie was so successful was because of how approachable it was, which is bizarre mm-hmm. to say, because not everyone knows who Aquaman is. I mean, you can kind of figure it out to some degree. Um, you know, pop culture has been parodying him since his invention essentially you know what i mean like anywhere yeah. and everywhere they could let's make fun of it uh you know fine whatever but i feel like this movie in the way that they portrayed him casting jason momoa making him so like weirdly like an everyman where he's mm. totally not an everyman but he's just such a friendly guy he's just a guy i feel like they open right. have these like crazy with powers a selfie yeah like yeah, yeah, exactly. Are you the fish man? Can I get a picture? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like he's, he's friendly. He's a lovable dude, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's friendly, he's approachable, but he also kicks ass. It's really approachable to people who may not be into the superhero genre, in my opinion, mm, while yeah. being totally superhero and super heroic and having characters who look like they came directly out of the comic, which just kind of Trojan horse them right into comics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joel, what did you think about the Pitbull song? <laughs> uh, I thought it has to be one of the worst uses of a popular song in anything. And so, so on the goddamn nose to, hey, we're going to the Sahara. Let's have a Pitbull song that samples Africa by Toto because everyone loves Africa by Toto. It was amazing. I mean, that is a that is a huge thing right now. But also, uh, like, as I've said before, just get Toto, okay? Just get the thing everyone wanted to hear, you know? <laughs> yeah. If you're going to make the reference, just get them. Th- it's whole, right there. The whole movie had a real weak soundtrack. I think it could have you could have pushed it over the line for being, man, this is pretty good, to this is pretty great if you actually worked in a better soundtrack there. And I'm not even talking about the use of songs. Like, the actual orchestral score and everything – felt very TV show. Yeah. It felt very weak. Like when they're walking around in the desert, I'm like, this This feels like something I would get like offline where it's like, I need copyright free music. Okay, here, I'll put that <laughs> under it. Do you think they went to Epidemic <laughs> Sound? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they did. Hey, let's, let's rewatch the credits and see if they mention them. Right. Uh, I mean, overall, the Aquaman movie is between this and Wonder Woman, because we know Wonder Woman was was not under the, Scott, the, the, the Zack Snyder eyeball. We know that. Aquaman I mean, I, I think he produced it or something. Oh. I think he produced it. Like, I know that. Like, every time I say that, like, there's no Scott Snyder influence or Zach Zach Snyder influence. He, Scott Snyder. Okay, so the, the, the Zach crazy. Snyder influence. We don't know to what degree he was a part of Wonder Woman. It, it, yes. All of these movies went through his studio house. So right. he and as the producer credit because that was the big ups. thing when they were like, "Well, we're just going to fire Zack Snyder, uh, or he's going to leave." Well, they, he's still making the movies no matter what. He has a hand in them. There's no yeah. removal of Zack Snyder from the DCEU. It just doesn't exist. And thank you so much for the last couple of subs we just got. Uh, oh. We just got subs from uh, the Matt Young. And we also got a sub from so- uh, Polar Bear, uh, Skateboard Pinda, The Good Man 13, Nimrod hmm. Canada, and Lad oh. Jupiter. All of them during the, uh, the weekly poll. Thank you guys so much. Only, only hey, four lot, of man. those were bears. <laughs> what happened to the bear theme? Like two of them were bears, and then Just, what happened? It's, it's, <laughs> it's a thing about uh, going against Ben from Comic Pop. <gasps> <gasps> what? Uh oh! Shots fired! Pew pew! Shots fired! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but anyway, yeah, no, so, you, but you could, because it, it's almost you know, across the board. Like, nobody goes around going, Wonder Woman was amazing because Zack Snyder did it. No, it's Patty Jenkins. That's mm. how it's always told. Yes. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. I feel like Aquaman's in the same boat because even Justice League, even though it was after the Zack Snyder era, had a lot of Zack Snyder in it. And what I, uh, mm. what I feel is, regardless of people wanting the Snyder cut, regardless of people wanting the darker, gloomier world that he's created, the money mm-hmm. speaks for what the audience wants. They exactly. want a hopeful Wonder Woman and the dude bro Aquaman. That's what that's what they yeah. really. Oh no, it's people true. Loaded like, with their wallets. They want the color. They want the like generic adventure that I know and am comforted comforted by. Yeah. Like, I mean, Wonder Woman aside, because Wonder Woman is, didn't feel like your tip. Like Aquaman felt like a like typical. It felt you like know, an Belly in adventure. It's, it's yeah, like an MCU it was a literal hero's journey. When the big battle's happening. It's like, oh, is that Mount yeah. Mordor? <laughs> oh, to yeah. the point where John Reese Davies plays King Crab. Like, yeah. it is, there's no, like, you're supposed to think Lord of the Rings when you're watching that scene. Uh, I, well, mm-hmm. if, if that was the goal, it definitely worked. Um, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, Aquaman overall, I thought was a great movie. I really did. My biggest complaints about it was it, it threw too much in at one time. But I guess the audience is disagreeing with me, Max. Everyone's loving it. Yeah. If you know the it's... plot to Aquaman, that is like 50 issues of Aquaman. Boy, yeah. is it ever. Like, it, yeah. it, it truly felt like they had to throw everything at the wall because, like, uh, we don't know if we're ever going to get to make a sequel, so put it all in now. <laughs> That's fair. I, I get that, but, like, a, a g- great example. Okay, and this isn't too heavily of a spoiler. Bear in mind, if you are watching this, this is a pseudo-spoiler cast. Obviously, not, we're not going nitty-gritty. It's been out for a while now. Um, right. But uh, the mother. The mother goes missing. They're like, oh, they fed yeah. her to the trench. No, being an Aquaman yes. man, reading the comics, I'm like, okay, so she's on that weird otherworldly island with the dinosaurs. In the center of the right. earth. I'm yeah. like, that's totally going to be the sequel. I, I'm calling the Aquaman sequel. <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, we're going to the trench, and that's where your mother went. I'm like, wait, what? what? And then they yeah. go to the island. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> that's like a whole sequel we could have done. Why? Boys ever. Like, and I feel like sending Aquaman to the island of the dinosaurs would have been a great movie. You time that with a Jurassic yeah, Park launch, you're good. <laughs> right, but at the same time, like when we were in that, uh, like in that sequence, it's cool and fun. But like, how much time could we have milked out of an island of dinosaurs in mm. the context of an Aquaman story? Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like we got just enough. Like, well, okay. You see some dinosaurs. I, I read this in a review, and I thought this was hilarious. They're like, the dinosaur island was cool, and I wanted to know more. But the worst part was, not a single character went, "Hey, is that a dinosaur?" <laughs> right? it's true they don't at that point i get it like arthur is like has gone through so much crap he's like right dinosaurs sure i get yeah. it this is my world <laughs> i mean like you know. i've seen aliens i've seen sea monsters it's all cool my my issue with that is oh hey you found your mom the queen i guess you don't need the trident now because she can just go back reassume the throne and stop all the bad stuff huh we're already here, and it's it's right there. <laughs> so yeah. might as well grab it. it's, dude, it's kind of it. That would have been it's, a it's really hard to discussion. Get <laughs> right. All right, so I'm the queen. So uh, you want to take me back, Arthur? We'll resolve this. You just got to get the trident. We'll lock the door. Then put the trident back, and we're good. Uh, no, no. I mean, if I well, hang if I on. Have it, he, why not? <laughs> but he he needed the trident to be able to leave because right. they established that you couldn't just go. Right. Right. You couldn't just you couldn't just head out. But yeah. Still. Yeah, they did think about that. So my question, though, and this is random, and hopefully someone else can answer this. So we see all these like crazy dinosaurs, one of which is one of those swimming crocodile dinosaurs, right? That Orm's riding. Where did he get that? <laughs> oh, half the animals <laughs> in that sent, movie. Sent I was for like, it. this doesn't work. Like, right, like, this, did you go there too? Come they're back. Just, to no, they're just, they're, the, the 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 prehistoric crocodiles from like you know tr- Jurassic World. No, no, no. Those are those are still exi- They're just really deep. They're they just deeper okay, than hold you on. thought. Let's talk about this. Oh, did world. they see yeah. the Meg? For the record, they saw we're the having Meg. fun poking <laughs> holes in this movie, but I, I everyone here liked it, right? Like no one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. I had fun. It, it, Total it, like fun. this is more tongue in cheek poking fun, just so everyone's aware. For real. But let's talk about for a moment the fact that in the opening when Zebel and Orm are meeting up, and they're quite obviously like close enough that you're getting sunlight. And there's a submarine yep. floating around. And yes, I know Black Manta sent it. But isn't that, like, really close to the surface? Like, how has no yeah, one known very. that this is a thing? <laughs> right? The fact that, like, anyone was like, I don't know, like, the, the what was it? The uh, the Jeff Johns guy um, who, oh, played, uh, who played Asian Jim in The oh, Office. Dr. Shin. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Shin. 
he like he's like, what are you talking? He's the only one. He he was like the comic book fan. He's just like, are you guys crazy? Like we have Kryptonians and like <laughs> we met, we saw Aquaman. Like there's a real like we who who's debating this anymore? Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> certain Doctor Shin had way more to do in the plot. That felt like an ex uh, excised plot line because he is huge in the Johns run of oh, the comic. Yeah. Well, I feel for I me, feel like his, I thought his whole purpose like, is to set up for the sequel. Like, they crammed right. so much into the, the, uh, this one. I, the sequel's obviously going to be Black Manta versus him with Dr. Shin. So, fine. Right. I'm in. Yeah. Like, I'll watch that. It's going to be fun. I mean, Black Manta was amazing. <laughs> His character. Yes, he was. They made him cool. They made him badass, which is hard to do. Even if they had to dr uh, drop a bunch of exposition diarrhea to make it work. Now, as you know, Black Manta, your grandfather was a frogman in World <laughs> War II, and he used this very knife that I am giving to you now. Oh, I hope nothing bad happens to me. I also liked, uh, I mean, like that knife you always carry. Wait, so he always has it, and you don't know where it came from? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that in this movie. Now, as you know, the Triumvirate of Atlantis was four separate kingdoms. You live here, so I don't really need to tell you this, but I'm going to tell it all to you anyway. Well, that, I, I just I, likes to hear himself talk. I felt like a good chunk of this movie was just explaining the world. Like, sure was. it almost felt like Amazing Spider-Man 2 in the way that they were just spent, spent most of the movie doing the world building, but they did it 10 times better. Because I left, mm. I didn't oh, leave yeah. going, oh, that's another movie. I left going, man, I really hope they put half of this stuff into... Uh, into the comics because damn it's awesome right. <laughs> you know you know how they pulled that off it's if ever a conversation gets too boring have something explode at face level <laughs> they do that three times in this movie Th things explode at uh, face level when people are trying to explain let stuff. me explain oh, what's yeah. going on <laughs> oh my god <laughs> no, i read a uh, i read a review that was like any like every 10 pages someone crashes through a wall <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> And I saw I read that before I saw the movie. I'm like, I don't care. I'm I'm in. I'm gonna enjoy it anyway. But I was like, every time someone crashed their wall, I'm like, so he's on the money. <laughs> like, <laughs> was about 10 minutes. But it was pretty but like you know what? Like Michael Bay has actually I've heard this before that like Michael Bay is like every ten pages there has to be an explosion or a car chase. And if you ever like watch Michael Bay movies in with that lens, it's complete it's science. But like I I don't argue no. with that. Like, no. you know what? I do want to see explosions. I do want to see car chases. I do want to see a person crash through a wall 10 times. Like, oh, so as long as the stuff between, as long as the other things, like people interacting, character building, uh, you know, world building, isn't filler for the action set piece, then I, you can have it all the way. Like, I saw Bumblebee. It has all that stuff, and it's still dope. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, all that, like, you can you can make a, a fun and not totally stupid action movie. And Absolutely. I think Aquaman works. Yeah. And I think it does that. I, I've always argued that a lot of people like to go, well, you know, Transformers didn't make me think. And I'm always like, I don't want to think in every goddamn movie. I want to just yeah. a bunch of I also of don't want to be... What? I don't want to be dumber having seen it. No, no, you're yeah. right. You're right you're Transformers right. movies but do I, make... I, don't, I don't care what you say. Transformers are amazing movies. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> that last one was they're amazing good, at apparently. some. They're amazing at lowering the bar. Uh, I, do, but, uh... I do like going into those slightly a little tipsy. Uh, with, with the, with the that would help. A popcorn. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should just fair. have those when you walk in. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, I I liked the movie. I thought it was really good. A lot of people calling me a yoker. The biggest problem I have with it was the dialogue was a little shoddy. Um, but I don't think it was mm -hmm. that bad at all. I didn't think it was nearly as bad as I've seen in more recent superhero movies. It's like, true. Yeah. I, I, I was fine. Uh, I mean, everyone I, I, likes you to know. praise the MCU, but there are multiple scenes in there where I'm like, people don't talk like this. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of those scenes are written by Joss Whedon. <laughs> 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 How long have you been sitting on that one? He's, he's like, please, someone. Only since I've week. seen a Joss Whedon thing. <laughs> so, okay, let's go over a little bit of news that has happened this week. Um, Ooh, apparently, uh, DC Universe is going to be joining. I can't find confirmation on DC Universe, but DC Comics is joining Comicsology Unlimited. There. Yeah. So from what I'm seeing, it looks like it's everything that they have on DC Universe is going to be available under Comixology Unlimited. Doesn't that seem oh. like a bad idea? Yeah. Yes. Seems like you're undercutting yourself right out of the gate. Now that's just comics, right? Not video stuff. No, no, that's just comics, just the... yeah. Well, then so maybe, like that's, that... maybe they're finding that not as many users who have it right now are using the library so they figure like eh maybe we can partner up make a little extra cash that way instead of tr just relying on DC Universe if it's mainly being used for the streaming of shows and movies 
Yeah. You know, I just, yeah, if it ain't broke, I mean, like, I, I get the move. I think I wouldn't, I don't get it nearly as much as I would in the content, in, in a world of DC Universe, the app. Mm. Like if you're if you're already demanding like however much ten dollars a month from your users yeah. for this for the service, why would you then split it and share revenue with somebody else? But like Tiffany said, like I assume it's just because they're like reality is nobody's reading the comics on it anyway, so screw what, it. What do they even have that's well, they, exclusive? They have the digital Young yeah, Justice comic, and that's the, the only one. The shows, I think. Well, the shows is pretty much. Oh, you mean though. the comics? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, because the shows, it makes sense. But, I mean, if you only have one or two offerings for exclusive comics, it doesn't make much sense, does no, it? No, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't at all. So I get what they're doing, but I feel like they're taking away from the DC Universe whole package mm. that they've been trying to sell you on. You know, unless they're going to have only some of them. Because, I mean, I'm looking at this list here, and this is a lot of what's on DC Universe. Oh, yeah. No, mm. actually, hold on. This is a lot of newer books. This is, mm. this is the Rebirth titles. This, that's what this is. Universe gives you a lot of the older stuff and the newer stuff. Right. So that makes a little more sense. Sure. But at the same time, I, 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 I get the move. I think it's like, give them, it gives them some breathing room. Like Comixology has been doing, not to say that like Comixology, Comixology has been in the comic industry for a long time. I think DC <laughs> could learn a thing or two. No, it's just that like Comixology's in, like their exclusive purview is digital distribution of comic books. Why? Why try to like do it better? Like they're already doing it, right. and they have the client base. Just give them, just give them the keys. Like let them do it. I mean, it's it's interesting. It is. Uh, I'm looking. I'm yeah. looking at. Uh, apparently, people are already questioning how DC Universe is doing because that was my next thought in general. Like, I have no idea. Um, because <laughs> someone said in our chat that they have seven hundred thousand subscribers right now. Uh, oh. which, I mean, is not good, but it's not terrible either. Uh. It's no Netflix. It's no Netflix. Netflix boasts oh, having over 25 million. Uh, no, no. Hulu boasts 25 million. Netflix boasts 130 million. That sounds about right. I mean, there's no way I, it, that they would do that well. Like, I, there's no way the DC Universe could do Netflix novels. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I never will. I accept that. Um, but I'm not yeah. seeing any concrete numbers on it. Um, apparently, collected by sensor data, uh, the DC Universe app was downloaded and installed by 143 users in the first two weeks of its launch. However, only 24% of those users ended up subscribing to the service, which means the subscriber count for the first two weeks is roughly 33,000. It's not good. They've been out for a little while now. I'll be really, I'll be really, really interested to what those numbers become once Young Justice Season 3 is done, To yeah. How many people ditch it? Well, I, I, oh, I, I'm yeah. curious about how, what they're doing w in general, because... They're not giving us enough content. Like, I, it's cool to have those old DC shows, but I'm not subbing for old DC shows. I don't want that stuff. You can get them elsewhere. Yeah, you know, I'm using it for that. <laughs> are, you, are you using it for the like, Batman I, animated series and stuff like that? Literally, that's it. Like, because the, the Blu-ray transfer of the show came out, and that's available through the app, oh. and I haven't plunked down the money for the, for the Blu-rays yet, and for now, I'm like, if I feel like watching, you know, like a Bullet for Bullock, I'm just gonna read it. I'm just gonna look at it on my phone. <laughs> my my favorite episode. That's a good selling point. Yeah, yeah. It's all like, it's all it's, over the news right now that they're they're struggling to pick up subscribers, which makes sense. You had one show. Well, not only that, but like, at the end of the day, I mean, this is a bigger issue. But like, comics have uh, comics are a niche thing, right? Mm. Like comics, all of them, the big two and Image. Plus, Boom and IW, Dark Horse is losing licenses like you wouldn't believe. Mm. Comics are a niche audience. Yeah. Which is and then you want to fragment it further? Well, it's one thing I've always said, because everyone sees my subscriber count of 2 million. It's a small flex. Yeah. But then they look at the videos and like, well, this one only got 20,000 views. This one only got 100,000 views. That one got 500,000. But why are these other videos not doing well enough? And I always say, because I cover comics. And comics is a small, small niche. Like, some comics sell 7,000 copies. So if I can get 30,000 yeah, yeah. views on that, that's actually pretty good. Like you have that's to, way better than the, than it sold. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, and, and comics have always been very niche, very much. It's it's not like a lot. Of, the comic fan base likes to think that they're the biggest thing ever, but it's a niche market for a niche audience. It's so small. People want to see Batman on the big screen. They don't want to go read his comic book. Mm. You know, then they want to watch Comic Story to find out what happened. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, reading this, apparently Netflix has also already acquired the international licensing for Titans. So it looks like DC Universe is always look at, already looking at a potential out to continue the shows. Mm. Which for me is like, uh-oh, what a mistake. Because once Titans is over, you're going to see a huge 
purge of subscribers yeah. on that on that app. I, I and this is when they first came out. I think we were talking about this when DC Universe was initially announced. How do they have enough yeah. content to support DC Universe? You can't give me one show at a time. I'm watching it, and I can afford ten dollars a month to watch the show a month. You know, because mm-hmm. you're basically paying ten dollars a month to watch four episodes of a show. Like I can afford right. that, but how many people can afford that? Especially when it's like you're catering to a comic book market. Some of them can only buy five books a week. Well, and you're like you're you can write it off. Yeah. Like everybody else mm-hmm. has to just like pay for it, has to eat it. And the reality is like for me, when I'm thinking about like DC Universe and everything, like okay, remember when very recently YouTube was like, hey, look at all these movies that are available on YouTube that you can watch <laughs> with ads in them and stuff. Right. For four ninety nine. Um, what like. What stopped DC from being like, because DC Universe has like those exclusive shows as well, like all mm. the shows like that are about DC that are exclusive to the app that are like starring, you know, like creators and yeah, uh, the DC you know, Daily influencers. Which I still wonder, right? DC Daily. I don't watch it, but I still wonder, like, what do you have to talk about daily? <laughs> I mean, like, you, I could talk about DC com- all of DC Comics every day, but it wouldn't be like you know, uh, it wouldn't be relevant all the yeah, time. That's what I mean. But like, but that show, uh, why is it on? Like, my point is, why not just make everything on the DC YouTube channel and then like save yourself the money and effort to make of making an app and just have it all available through that. If it's all video, video content anyway, and you're and you're getting rid of the comics, like the point of having an app is, oh cool, all of DC's at my fingertips, right? I can read comics, watch shows, movies, and these like exclusive shows about these movies, shows, and comics. Right. Fine, but if you get rid of the comics and it's just a video streaming app, why not just put everything on the DC Universe YouTube channel and then just like heavily advertise and, and or he- heavily like monetize it, mm. and you make and, and you save yourself so much overhead. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know real. what they're doing. It's, it's, it's an interesting turn that the DC Universe is at. Uh, Tiffany, what do you think about the DC Universe? <laughs> right? Well, uh, well, I, I try, look, look. I uh, finished my cookie. Uh, hold on. I'll, I'll stay up right. Like, recently, we've been trying to get more professional about all of the podcasts that I host here on Elder Monster, and I'd like to try and get Weekly Poll in that way, which kind of incorporates going, hey, Tiffany, haven't heard you for 10 minutes. The chat's going to yell at right. me in five more. You want to say something? No, no, they were... <laughs> We were all enjoying. I was eating my Darth Vader gingerbread cookie. Uh, I was like, "Now's now's a good yourself. now's a good time for me to to eat my cookie." Um, I look. I, I think part of the reason why they decided to go for it was, I mean, does it cost money to run the app? Sure, but it's not like they have to purchase the content. The content's there already. You're seeing other networks, like even like TV networks, doing the same thing. Now I think is the time for them to be like, "Why not DC? Let's see how it goes." Because what if? Um, was it CBS who has Star Trek? Yes. You know, they're they're doing it based solely on having that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, they're testing the waters, I think, along with other companies who are doing the same thing, pulling away from Netflix. They're watching Marvel do the exact same thing. They're like, well, we got here first. Now, Marvel and Disney are going to have the opportunity to learn from this, but Marvel, um, paired with Disney, has a much deeper library. Yes. And so... Mm. Instead of it being a DC app, they might have wanted to consider making it a like Warner Brothers app. That's exactly what I was about to say. Like I don't that. know why it Let wasn't my Looney Warner Tunes. Pull everything out, do Looney Tunes, but you have DC in there. You could have done Titans, yeah. but here's a bunch of Warner Brothers classics. Oh, plus like all the other shows that people like Freakazoid, Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, mm. uh, like the entire library of Warner Brothers animation. Hell, you could make a kid's version of the app the way they have like YouTube Junior or whatever, or, mm. you know, crap like that. But it's Kids WB. Yeah. Oh, and it's just all that's all so the stuff. good. Let me get the data project. I, I feel like the DC oh, app Let me get the is, screw is ones. Let me gonna, get Tasmania. The DC Universe app is just going to always be in the shadow of Disney's app because it's going to be like, look at all these Disney shows, uh, the Marvel shows based on the heroes you want. While you're waiting for the next one, check out the Star Wars shows. And while you're waiting for the next Star Wars, check out the Disney exclusives. And you're just like, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it gives me everything. Well, I get on the yeah. DC Universe app and I go, okay, where's Titans? Done. Do you know, like that? Right. I mean, yeah. like... Honestly, I don't care about the Titans. So, like, for me, it's like, I got to see the Swamp Thing show, but mm. I don't know when the hell it comes out, and I haven't heard much. I saw a little, like, be, like a little making of trailer, but, like, again, why a whole app? I don't think so. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm also, for me, my issue also, not to hijack again, but, like, my issue continues to be, like, stop contributing to the destruction of my disposable media. Like, <laughs> I am... I and hundreds of thousands of others, if not millions, 
are going to hit a terminal velocity when it comes to how much I can afford and how many GD streaming apps I have. Yeah. You're, no, that's another if argument. Because if, if I have to choose between a mediocre Star Trek show, and that's the only reason I'm paying for CBS All Access, and DC, and Disney+, Plus, and Netflix, Hulu, and all my radio streaming apps, F you, I'm just going to steal it all. Yeah. And, like, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that I'm going to do that, but, like, why wouldn't I at this it's point? Because point. you're stealing from me. You're stealing the convenience of Netflix away from me by fragmenting everything. And it's, like, it's a mess. And it's only going to get worse before it gets better. And DC, unfortunately, Disney and Disney's same deal is making it worse. They're, They're just trying to the desperately to screw it all up well, it, just to get a little bit more money. As, as, as everyone's more. doing, everyone's going, why do we go to Netflix? Let's just do our own thing. And it's like, the right. problem is with doing your own thing is there's now 20 of you and I can't get you all. Does anyone <laughs> remember you imagine the Comic-Con if... HQ app that had Con Man? Yeah. Which, by the way, Vegas. I still can't get my hands on season two of Con Man because they keep moving the goddamn show to every platform. And then when I find the game <laughs> it's gone. I mean, can you imagine ABC or uh, AMC All Access? We're moving Walking Dead to our app. And so you can only watch Walking Dead on the AMC All Access app. And like, like are you crazy? Don't I'm, not paying, for, I'm not paying for one show. Like, I'm, I'm especially if it's not great. Because that's the thing. Like, I'm not saying debut Walking Dead on the AMC app. I'm saying Walking Dead season whatever yeah. on the AMC app. Like, Plus oh, what our spinoffs and our Chris Hardwick shows. <laughs> Right, exactly. Like, I, yeah. Well, oh, and I can also get Talking Dead too, mm-hmm. or I can just listen to the podcast. Just it's just getting it's, it's just, getting it, ridiculous for your average fan to be able to afford anything. Why is it? It really is. I remember back when I, I, I didn't and, do this as a job, couldn't write up on my comic books, and I literally had twenty dollars a week. I wouldn't have bought yeah. a DC app, or I would have cut into my buying my yeah. comics. Yeah, that, you know, is that you're like you're yeah you're cutting your nose to spite your face, like you're hurting your own bottom line. You. DC is a publishing company. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, but that's the thing. I, and I really, I think it all is just in pursuit of what, like, why would I just put all my effort into the DC universe YouTube channel and take a percentage when I could get it all. And it's like, because all is maybe 5% of the whole that you could have gotten from over there. Yeah. If you like, proportionately speaking it's just mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but that requires people to like really really think and plan and have like market research and like and 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 know something about what the technology they're working on is like that's the problem is that like netflix's whole like the reason why netflix is falling apart is because like tv stations still want it to be 1975 and they think like oh crap we can make an app and then they just take it they're like well i'm pulling all this crap from netflix and it's like does don't you understand that it makes sense for everybody to just play ball and have it be mm-hmm. one platform like i understand if like you if youtube was falling apart which like some would argue it is yeah. but if youtube if youtube was like insolvent then i get a dc streaming app because it's like what am i going to do go to v- go to vimeo like <laughs> i get the app <laughs> well, there like, goes the vimeo, vimeo sponsorship fuck, yeah. i'm sorry vimeo M- make it cheaper but like I'm not gonna like. Then I get a DC streaming app, but like doing a DC streaming app now. Now, when you have a DC Universe channel with a million subscribers, I mean, I don't know. Just whatever. Yeah. Anyway, uh, dude, can you imagine how much better off ti- I, the DC Universe would be in general if they just monetized the hell out of those Titans episodes? Yes. The, the amount of people <laughs> that would just watch right? them out like, of sheer curiosity. Hell. Wow. How about you? I'll do you one better. Because they know the people at YouTube, or they have like access to people at YouTube, like um, coordinate with YouTube Red. Like you, you, you throw in a fuck uh, a, a crap load of advertisers uh, of, of ads in there. And, but if you subscribe to YouTube Red, you don't get those ads, right? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, now there's a little like a little tit for tat, a little collaboration there with YouTube. Like, I, I just ah, hey, wait a minute. Uh, what about this? YouTube Red wants to launch like terrible PewDiePie shows. <laughs> what if it was a Swamp Thing show? <laughs> I like the way this guy thinks. <laughs> I'm saying, like, you know, why not an action? Why not legitimate content instead of like a Rhett and Link movie? Like, I watched a couple episodes like, of that. And I was like, it's, it's okay. The problem with the YouTube Red shows, just to kind of be on topic here, is the same problem I have with the Justice League movie. It's okay if I didn't already work, you know, basically for YouTube, I wouldn't be yeah. watching them. I'm no, That's I'm not going out it's... of my way to watch these things. It's not enough. Like, if CBS All Access was doing Star Trek The Next Generation Season 8, I'd have CBS All Access. But they're not. They're doing, like, this 
Frankenstein's monster of Star Trek that no one has asked for. Right. That ha- that takes place in no universe you recognize. So like, why would I be interested in that? Like, and that's for Star Trek fans, which again, CBS All Access is like, we're gonna get all in on this super niche group of people. Like. I- I think they're all simultaneously banking on nostalgia because even the DC Universe app, the bulk of their content relies on you wanting to see something you remember, you know, like they're really, I mean, like, here's the thing, like you missed out on like something when you like that was out X amount of years ago, like maybe you'll watch it, maybe you won't. Are you going to watch the thing you want to watch? Like, I know as soon as we got the app and I was like looking at it. Instead of going and checking out something new, I was just like, cool, they have Batman, and they've got Justice League, and I'm set, and Teen Titans, the cartoon. I'm good. Yeah. I could have checked out any other thing that was there, but I just wanted to watch the stuff I had already seen. So, like, there's only so much nostalgia that can go around <laughs> before it's like, okay, my wallet can't handle nostalgia anymore. Well, let's, let's, well, also, let's look at that, Tiffany. I actually want to follow up on that. I, I, if you sure. have a point you want to follow up, uh, Sal, that's fine. But I, I wanted to go off her nostalgia thing, because that actually brings me to... <laughs> Overall, what did you guys think of Young Justice? Because I felt I was looking forward to it with rose-tinted nostalgia glasses. Mm. And when it finally came out, I'm like, it's still good. But I thought it was a lot it's, better. You know, like... like it's a, it's a different beast now is what it was. I cover this in my own video review. It's, yeah, it's most of the writers back. It's most of the voice actors back. But it's a new company handling the animation, a new style of writing because they're not releasing them episodically Saturday morning anymore. These are three episodes at once that tie in to make one arc. So we're doing arc-based stories now. And it's a little darker and it's a little bit more mature, which again makes sense because you know that's the way the show was going anyway. And you figure if it's on an app, it's probably directed to more adults anyway. And the audience has, has aged up. That too. I didn't think it was shameless and I didn't think it was mean spirited like other shows that do the same thing. <coughs> Teen Titans. <laughs> hey, fuck Batman worked out in the end. <laughs> did it? Yeah. Don't, don't I, argue with me, it did. For me, I, like, because I meta watch, like, I, I, I'm, I'm, we're plugged into the industry, I understand how this works. So for me, I was like, well, it's made for an app, it's not made for broadcast television. The animation style, like for me, I haven't seen a single freaking frame of Young Justice because number one, I didn't really watch it when it was on. I just missed it. I missed the boat on that. I could also couldn't find the damn thing on TV. Uh, number two, um, after it was over, I tend to like if I know something is dead, I just try and move on because I can't. I can't firefly my life anymore. <laughs> oh, I know. I 100 <laughs> agree. So Come like, on, brown so coats. When people... We still have a chance. <laughs> No, it's over. I'm sorry. Yeah. Enjoy the boom comic. That's all you can really do. We didn't. We didn't take that hill. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that hill. Yeah, we didn't no! take it. We uh, still got this. Brown coats. But when will speak Sarah? To me. <laughs> yeah. What about John Doe and Sarah Connor Chronicles? When are they coming uh, back? <laughs> never. Terminator Six is saying Sarah Chronicle, Connor Chronicles Chronicles never happen. So like, but like uh. You know, for me, Young Justice is like when I when they were like, we're getting Young Justice back. I go, OK, well, it's going to be for a niche of a niche audience. It's not for TV, which means the animation's probably going to suffer. And I feel like you're not going to hit the audience that was there. Like the pe- like people who watched Young Justice are in two camps, people who loved it or watched it. And the people who watched it probably aren't going to watch or get this app. Yeah. And the people who loved it are probably a percent of a percent. And I'm sorry that sucks. And like I and I'm not saying the show sucks or that it was a bad idea or that like it wasn't worth it. I'm glad you're getting this show back and I'm so happy that you get this. Enjoy it and watch it. Because like this is very tangential, but I'm gonna use it as as, as its own example and then throw it away. Spider Man and Mary Jane got unmarried. Then you got a whole book where they are not anymore. And you didn't buy it. <laughs> like, if you want to show that this thing exists or that you want to see it, like, come back. Like, when Serenity was a movie, no one saw it. Yeah. And that's why like, we never got more Firefly. Even Killing Wash in that one. Brown coats, you know. Uh, uh, after the chat for the brown coats. Anyway, even Killing Wash, you still could have redeemed the lore and the whole idea of the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's a mess. Like, and it's because... Most people are like, it's TV. It's a TV show. Like, why would I like live this? Like, why would I? Why would I get all this? Well, excited about it. 
you know? Well, it's, it's the same thing. Anyway. I, I agree with you 100% on that. It's, I feel the same problem is going to happen with Teen Titans Season 6 if that, if that ever does actually get made. Everyone's just, they want this thing that doesn't exist anymore, basically. Yeah. No. No. For me, it's like Teen Titans, like the show, like the the show that they teased at the end of the movie yeah. or the cartoon movie. Which is hard to uh, believe. But like D- DC makes these disposable garbage direct to video, video on demand Justice League movies. Just so sad because they never make those. Movies. Like if you want to see if like people want to watch more Justice or, or uh, 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 Teen Titans, make a Teen Titans movie. Like mm. h- how much would that cost? How much more would it cost to make a 90 minute episode of the Teen Titans cartoon than a season, right? Just make a cool movie. That's all they want. They just want a complete story. Yeah, just resolution. make these wrap it up. A young, like how how much more expensive would it have been, or to make a Young Justice movie that tied up the last season? Mm. Like, and you have an animation studio, you have the people working there. Just do that. Like these are just logical th- leaps that I make where I'm like, you know, I I I you know I want I want more as much as everybody else. I want more of everything I like. But at the end of the day, as it turns out, I don't because, like, I have at least six, I have at least four Star Wars movies that I don't like. And, like, I, just, I, I you know, don't make more, just make better. Like, make one more great one. Like, make two more great ones and then just leave it alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that. That's my opinion about that, about Young Justice. It's like, I'm glad there's a show. I guarantee there won't be another season. Mm. I hope you like well, it. Well, you would say because that, that's all your but Titans already has a season two going. Oh, I don't mean that show. I mean, Titans, money was spent. Like, yeah. that show is <laughs> a freaking way. Like, yeah. And, and they also made deals, too, with that show to get it up on Netflix in places like Canada and Australia, where we still don't have the app. You don't or... have the app. Nope. Which is why I'm wondering if the app is a test for the United States, and if it doesn't work out, well, they've already got these deals to get these shows made and on Netflix. Oh, oh yeah. Smart. By the way, great idea. Like, unfortunately, some of these are time-sensitive shows, but, like, man, great idea. I mean, the DC YouTube show that's on the app is also on the channel. Like, they do roll that out onto the channel, which is like, why would you do that? You've ruined the exclusivity of that show. But, like, I, you bet your bottom dollar that when that app does close, all that stuff will have a, a home on deals they've already yeah, made. Yeah, and that's definitely mm. what they're doing. They're, they're hedging their bets. So, like, well, can we get a yeah. bunch of people to watch this? And if we can't... Well, we have all these other sources it's going to go to. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be funny for them to be like, okay, we tried the streaming app. That didn't work. We'll put it all on Netflix. Oh, what's that, Marvel? You took all your stuff off of Netflix? <laughs> well, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. No, no, we got the Netflix deal. The timing right. literally can, couldn't be better. You can literally replace Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist with the Titans, with Swamp Thing. With, like, it's, it actually is kind of brilliant. And yeah. I think you're right. I think that's what they did. In fact, you know what would be amazing is just to be like, hey – uh, Netflix, I see you're not making Marvel shows anymore. Would you like to make some Vertigo shows for us? Yeah, Sandman you, you series. Know what you know what? I'm going to throw a theory out there based upon what you just said, Tiffany. That DC okay. Universe was on its way out. The Disney streaming app was announced. They yanked everything from Netflix, and the, the head honchos at Warner Brothers were like, so if you don't hit the numbers, what if we just do all the Netflix? Like, they literally are already planting it over there because that's their plan. Well, without Nar- Marvel shows on Netflix, let's give them DV- DC. I know we started the DC Universe thing and we've been hyping it, but let's just, just kind of let it die out. We'll just Right, but maybe it's just a commercial for the shows we're making. <laughs> like, I mean, really, because we know Netflix canceled those Marvel shows. Like, Netflix mm-hmm. is like, we ended those. Like, Netflix decided to end those Marvel yeah, shows because they're like, now. because they're, they're like, why would I make a show for you and you're making a competitor for me? I feel like maybe the reason why it was so quick, like Netflix was like, screw this, like Daredevil season three, here you go. I know you all loved it. It's over. Like it, they canceled it that harshly and that quickly because they're like, because they'd already made the deal. Like they're already, they're already replacing them with DC shows. And you know what? what, uh, And just what you said, exclusivity. What if the DC universe app gets them for six months? So you pay $10 a month. They don't lose anything manning that app and all of them go to different Mm -hmm. locations. Well, also, it's a great test case. Like, maybe the only people who actually know how many people are watching the stuff on DC Universe are the people at Netflix. So I'm like, <laughs> what are the numbers? Well, how are the numbers on Titans? How are the numbers on Swamp Thing? Like, we'll 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 decide what goes to series and what gets a miniseries. Like, mm. I feel like that. That I mean, like, if I were them, that's what I would do. 
if I was trying to compete with a, with with Disney making a, a a friggin Star Wars show that sounds amazing, and I'm mm-hmm. not but I'm not gonna get DC plus uh, Disney plus because I have a real problem with this whole thing. But that Mandalorian show looks friggin dope. Yeah. Well, he doesn't. Uh, yeah, you know what? Well, two can comment on this one. Netflix has all the Mark Miller shows. It, like that too. You know, I don't. Oh yeah. Mark Miller is very full of himself on the fact that he got this Netflix deal, but at the same time, sure I'm is. Like, who really cares about the Millarverse? Like, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. Do you really to like legit? Most... Did you? There, there's, there's legit two properties I, I would love to see: Reborn and Magic Order. Okay. Yes. If they could make those, they're, they're just, they're basically miniseries. They would work perfectly as a single season show on Netflix. I would love to see that. Sure. That's, that's good insight. <laughs> and I hope they roll out with those two first because I don't think it can sustain itself. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's such that's... a weird decision to have the Millerverse. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it feels like Millerverse. It, it, it feels like it's just, it's just rampant speculation. I have all this money, and I yeah. and I don't. And at the end of the day, Hollywood doesn't know anything or how to predict stuff. So they're like, we're just we're just putting all money on like the a roulette table and hoping we get a return. I, a I feel like the Millerverse is like if Tiffany was the creative director of Netflix and was like. You gave me an extra hundred thousand dollars. Hey, I like your comics. Do you want to make shows? <laughs> Listen, yeah, I, I want to I, see that. I really just want two of them, but you know what? If I have to buy them all at the same time, fine. <laughs> you know what? Maybe you come up with another gem. I don't know. We'll start it, with these two. It probably helps too that Miller writes most of his stuff. It, it feels like you're reading a spec script for a TV show or a movie oh, yeah. anyway these days. So they're like, oh shit, he did half the work for us. We don't gotta yep. do nothing. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah, and he already has experience with Hollywood and relationship with them, so like, it 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 already makes the most sense. Mm-hmm. But it, like, by the way, watch Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back because like, it feels like this all over again. <laughs> it really does. Where they were like, once X Men hit the box office, all the Hollywood studios start buying up every superhero property they get their greedy little hands on, and so it's like, oh, but now instead of it being studios, it's streaming services. That's that's way too perfect too, because Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back is back on Netflix right now, so and watch it's it getting a reboot. Yeah, it is. What's up with that? <laughs> uh, it's just a sequel. I mean, like, oh. it's just called it's called Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, and the idea is, just a really quick pitch, uh, Blunt Man and Chronic are getting rebooted, and so Jay oh. and Silent Bob are going to go oh. back and try to stop the reboot. So it's like a reboot of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Kind of clever. Yeah, that's a cool idea. We'll see. I like their movies. But, okay, so let's move on to the next question. I love those movies. This is currently making rounds on the news, um, that, but there's no confirmation to anything. From what I'm reading, it's just somebody started up a rumor that seems to be going around. Uh, but oh. with the success of Spider-Man into the uh, Spider-Verse, uh, there is rumors that there's talks of the individual characters getting their own shows. Mm. That would be a Disney decision, so we'll see mm. what happens. I, like, does Disney own the rights to like, the TV show stuff? I think they do. Because, like, remember when Marvel unleashed that horrible uh, Spider-Man show? Like, Marvel Spider-Man? Oh, yeah. Like, I think Mar- I think... But the idea that, like, here's the thing. The deal with Sony and Marvel must be really, really good. Because mm. when X-Men were making movies, uh, we got... Uh, we lost Fantastic Four and X-Men comic books. And when Venom became a movie... We got like multiple Venom events. Oh yeah. So clearly there is Which a relationship between Marvel and Which are all really good for the record. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> uh, that is, by the way, mind. That, that's the word. Yeah. But I, yeah. I will. But I will concede that that's true. There, there, I've um, yet to read any of these Venom, like Venom verse. Oh, it's gonna be garbage. No, that was fun. You know. No. Venom or Venom. What the fuck? Oh, that was fun. Uh, kind of fun. <laughs> whatever one. Yeah. The, a Donny Cates Venom series, yeah. like best mm-hmm. in years. I get it. Yeah. Like, what? But um. <laughs> Right, but at the same time, my point is just simply that like, Marvel would probably be happy to produce a bunch of like six, a bunch of test-proven, successful mm-hmm. Spider-Man mm-hmm. franchise TV shows. We're all uh, show ready. Okay, I mean, so if you had to pick one character out of that lineup for your show, who's it gonna be? And I'm dibs in Penny Parker. I'm sorry, I'm dibs in that. Oh, I'm taking it away from you. Too. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Spider Gwen is the show. Oh yeah, oh, well, so without a doubt. Well, so Spider yes. Gwen, you better talk quick, Tiffany. You're running out of options here. Uh, I'm gonna do a, a bunch of mini shorts then on uh, Spider or Spider Man Noir. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> I'm gonna do. So I guess shorts. I, I guess I get Spider Ham then. I guess he'll be 
He'll be a five minute web animation. No, he'll be 11 minutes on Cartoon Network. <laughs> and the deal is, is that if you watch all 11 minutes, it eventually becomes a mature, in depth story a la Steven Universe or Adventure Time. Yeah, I would give him a 22 minute Animaniac show. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Just, or Freakazoid. No, it's just, it's like, it's just Spider Ham, but it's Freakazoid. What if we just have a whole I, I, episode that continues the Spider Man 2099 cliffhanger Easter egg at the ending? Where he oh no he's just back no why are you pointing at me no you're pointing at me <laughs> no that's all right too no <laughs> all right so I want to move away from the news because we are coming to the close time of our, our podcast and I wanted to get you guys oh. 2018 was a great year I don't think we had an official episode where we actually said what our favorite books were or did we I don't know it's been like two three weeks now no no we didn't no. do that no no Tiffany you go first this time so we can't take your thunder. Oh, no, Nicole. you go ahead. Okay, Joel, you, go, you first. go first then, so we don't take your thunder. What is your favorite story uh, okay. of 2018? You know, I thought it was going to change, but I kept coming back to uh, White Knight, just the way it looked, the way it reimagined these characters, the way that, you know, it was topical, but in a really smart, really clever way. Yeah, I, I loved White Knight to death, and I'm really excited for the sequel. Okay. Nice. For me, it was Dark Knight Metal. Metal, I know it kind of started in 17, yeah. but it wrapped up and it led into No Justice. I just like what Scott Snyder has been doing with the DC universe. I think it's amazing. It's epic. So for me, that's that's my favorite stuff right now. If, I, if I'm not allowed to take White Knight, so. Wow. <laughs> Fair um, we're not, no, for the record, guys, no, we're not actually done. I just wanted to make sure we have time for this, because yeah. <laughs> I thought um, this would take a lot <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's quite a few series that like nailed it um i think death of inhumans was an incredible series mm. um, oh yeah that was, that was the one that shocked me where i was like oh crap i love it um and the, and a bunch of other i mean like for me the best fantastic four book is marvel two in one yeah it was and it proved to me i was like that's that's zub or, or no it's zadarsky mm -hmm. uh zadarsky like needs to be like a Marvel architect. Did you like, see yeah. his? Like, did it, you it, see his uh, tweet about his renegotiation? Boy, did I! He, oh, yeah, he did tweet, I. So for those of you guys in the chat, Chip Zdarsky tweeted out, "I'm renegotiating with Marvel, and if they don't give me what I want, I'm going over to DC with one thing on a piece of paper." Yeah. What about a fourth Joker? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fourth and joke. Jeff Johns was like, "Hey, don't make fun of that man. That story's happening at some point." <laughs> Wasn't it supposed to start in December? No one knows anymore. <laughs> All right, Tiffany, what did you it. like this year? I was trying to like really narrow it down to one, and I, I'm having like the hardest time ever because yeah. it's like this year, uh, Justice League Dark or like 2018 mm. Justice League Dark started, which is just the best Justice League book out there, in my opinion. Fight me, no Scott problem. Snyder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Justice League um, Dark is amazing. It's just phenomenal um, if you're a magic lover. So you know. Obviously, and then I was like, "But Mr. And Mrs. X also started this year, and that was great." Oh my god! But they... that was my surprise hit of the year. I was like, "Right?" I was, I, someone's like, "Oh yeah, it's gonna be the ongoing adventures of Rogue and Gambit married in space," and I'm like, "Pass!" Like, what the fuck? Why would I read that? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? No, it's just ah, oh, so good. But then also, I already mentioned it because it's part of the Millerverse. But Magic Order came out in 2018, and I, I think that's just such a tight series, just incredibly amazing, like magic-based series. But like with this like cool, dark, mobbish, not really sort of feel. It's it's mm. interesting. I, I really just, mm, yes. <laughs> you uh. You mentioned Jim Zub there a minute ago by accident, Sal, and I think we really got to give credit to that man. I think 2018 was that dude's year. He breathed fresh life into the champions, made it one of the best team books at Marvel, one of the yeah. best team books to read. But also, he wrote a truly hilarious crossover in Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. which I love to death as well. So the man deserves credit. He's one That's of those true. guys. And here's a fun thing about Jim Zub, because I chat with him a lot of conventions. He's also a mm -hmm. full-time like professor. Or teacher, yes, or something. He teaches art with like tenure mm -hmm. or something. Like he does. Well, he's one a, of my best friends in high school. Studied under him, actually. Yeah, he's a full time teacher who writes in his spare time, and he's writing mm -hmm. like twenty things in Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> That's awesome. All I'm picturing is this man just wakes up and just like, so, oh, we got ten minutes of this class. Uh, issue two of Champions. Here we go. <laughs> right. Rest of credit. Funny. Get the champions out of this mess. Because <laughs> I wrote myself in a corner. I don't know what to do. <laughs> probably explains, too, why he's able to write kids so well, being a teacher and yeah. everything he's able to draw on that. 
That's not mm-hmm. bad. Uh, Nick Spencer's Amazing Spider-Man, the chat brings up. Yeah, that actually, yeah. I'm really liking it. The, the first five issues, I was like, ah, what are you doing? But ever since then, I've just been really on board. He's doing such a great job of bringing him back. A lot you of deep totally cuts. right. Nick Spencer's, uh, like, redeeming Spider-Man for a lot of people. Yeah, uh, what is your overall opinion too. of Nick Spencer's Spider-Man? Because we know you're, like, the largest Spider-Man fan ever, who's a huge fan of yeah. Spider-Man, too. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think... I'm warming up to it. Uh, the, the Peter Parker split arc, like I, I was like, what am I doing? Like, what are we doing? Yeah, here? I didn't like uh, that at all. But if you look at it as like a conflict, like if you look at it as like a meta book about mm-hmm. like the duality of Peter Parker and she like what he's doing. been acting like for the last ten years, like it's really kind of genius. Um, but that's not enough for me. I gotta have it also be fun. Uh, <laughs> but like the la- like the 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 thieves arc, I was like, okay, we're back. Like, I it's, like it's the Spider-Man trivia arc. Man. The trivia arc was fun. Say that was, was my great. favorite. No, I agree. Um, but it, it, it says to me that like Spencer, like has a plan, cares, is trying, and has something to say, and also like yeah. has reverence for the character, and like that's all I can ask for at this point. Yeah. So I'm in. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, I also want to just give a quick shout out. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we didn't we didn't give like as much of an honorable mention. Scott Snyder's Justice League is uh, is the reason to read Justice League. It now. is so yes. incredible. It really, really Turn is. Turn that book around. <laughs> like, and and so like that's to be commended. Justice League should be a top selling title of all like every time, and mm. it hasn't been. Let's just be honest with ourselves. For a like, long period been. of time, you've and, been able to skip it. Yeah, and it's back, and it's great. Um, con- uh, conversely, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's talking about Green Lantern anymore. Oh, okay. Am I the only like I'm a Green Lantern fan, but what is even happening? Like, uh, nothing I want to read, but uh, I'm sorry, The Green Lantern. <laughs> I, I get where he's going with it, but he's, he's the, 100% neglecting everything that is set up to Green Lantern to be what he is now, to make him a space cop. And like on yep. paper, this sounds amazing, but like in practice, like what, what yeah. is even happening? <laughs> I don't know. Also in 2019, oh no, we're talking about 2018. Because I was going to say in 2019, Tomasi took over Detective. Hooray! Oh, oh let's talk about that for two seconds because it started technically so in 2018. Good. Yes. It is so it's great. Really, he, he just made it. It really is. It's so nice to have a layered, complex Batman bat who makes sense and whose decisions make sense yeah. and have an internal logic. I love it. I, I, I loved this arc. I like, Literally, we did an episode about like how comic book deaths are like hurting the industry. And then I was like, oh, what happened in this book? And I love it. <laughs> a, a, like, a good one that made Oops. sense yeah. and hit and all the, the thing, criteria. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. it, it's it's some, some, it, you know what I find weird though it's almost like they're trying to make Detective more classic Batman because they're like yes. okay yes. Tom King's got his audience Tom King's run is going okay but is there's very much a, di- a divide between the Batman fans right now mm-hmm. so what if we made Detective because I noticed the suit is blue and gray as opposed to the yeah. current black and gray and I almost feel like mm-hmm. that's an attempt to be like make this more like true to form old school Batman Tomasi yeah. I, I bet it is. I bet it's at least like supposed to like make you think. Like it's just make them think Batman. Yeah. Make them think, like mm-hmm. at the very least, Tomasi's run on Batman and Robin. Like just I'm, make them think about that. I'm glad you mentioned Robin. I'm so excited to see what Tomasi eventually does with Damien in this book. Because remember, Tomasi worked harder than just about anyone else to make Damien likable, and then Adam Glass ruined him again in Titans by making him a little psychopath with a black site prison. So man, Dude, the black I cannot wait. Great. Too much it's great. It's great. <laughs> that's terrible. I love it. That's the worst thing. I have judge, jury, and sometimes executioner. It just makes but not sense real. for his character with all the shit he's been through recently that he would just be like, "We need a different plan." Batman's plan. Although I've noticed that as a repeat trend now that I think about it, with every Robin, your plans don't work, yep. Batman. Your methods don't work. We need to go do something else. Oh man, yeah. if only I'd done Batman's method. <laughs> exactly. Like, well, my oh. method's been working for eighty years, and uh, your status quo changes every three months. So you know, <laughs> between the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and um, in twenty eighteen, of course. Uh, Doomsday Clock wrapped up in the 12 months they planned, <laughs> and man, was it a surprise hit, and uh, did it ever answer all the questions you had about DC Rebirth and bring in a new age for DC Comics. Sal, I think you slid. That didn't I did, happen. I slid that, 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 that didn't like, happen here. Where Gary <laughs> Frank was like eight issues before they announced Doomsday Clock. <laughs> I still think that was the biggest mistake. They should have just had, like, okay, this, this book, obviously, how about we just have him do a bunch of them ahead of time? Like, there's no way he can mess it up. <laughs> 
Right. Like, don't don't announce Earth One Batman Volume Three until he's at least forty pages into the freaking issue. <laughs> that, that, that too. It, it, I feel like this is a problem we're also having with Jeff Johns, though. Like, okay. oh, Doomsday Clock's gonna be twelve issues, be done in December. Oh, that ain't happening. But I'm starting three Jokers that's coming out in like November. No, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, well, that and that's I don't think that's either Fabic or Johns' fault. I think that's. DC has a new leader, and that leader has an agenda, and that agenda is not contra- is contrary to what DC needs in order to survive and get better. What's the agenda? I don't even know what you're talking about. The agenda is that, like, uh, if Colbert makes fun of you, you got to change everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Everything, everything's gone weird with the Black Label ever since then. Yeah, like, and the, but, like, everything was hinging on it. Like, the, uh, what was it? The Three Jokers, the, the Batman Damned, like... Uh, that what was it? That Capullo Snyder Batman book that's coming out. Like, there's mm-hmm. so much hinging on well, you know, it. You know and then they were like, "Oh, to follow up with that." They, DC needed Doomsday Clock to succeed super well, or they needed yep. Black Label to hit off to really have that like good finale to the year. It neither has yep. been has worked. Neither has worked. No. Yep. Um, also, what about uh, Frank Miller's Superman Year One? <laughs> that's thing? funny. Oh yeah, yes. yes. John Romita Jr. is drawing it. It's going to be a whole thing. But I bet oh, it won't now. Mean? I don't even think about that. I I don't know. It's Miller. It might still happen. It, well, it, just, it'll happen, but he'll wear he'll wear like a weird domino mask, and it'll be called like stupendous man. It can't be stupendous man. That's Calvin and Hobbes, but like you know, <laughs> super duper man. And he, yeah. Hold chair. Uh, just real quick, I just remembered another issue. It, it was not even a new series. It was just like a one single issue that came out that was really just like wow uh, for me. Uh, saga fans, Saga number fifty four came out in 2018 uh it was the thing none of us wanted to see because it it signaled a year long or longer break for the series that we've been getting for the past several years and it was quite the gut punch quite the gut punch so that's the problem with saga is why i can't follow along with it at this point because like it's there's so many hiatuses and such a need for trades to, to for it all to make sense well the hiatuses used to be um like a month or so a couple of months, it was basically, it was like a, a break between uh, seasons of a show and then they yeah. would come back. This one was different. This was the one they were like, yeah, we need to be going on break for a little longer and hopefully it'll be a year. Maybe it'll be longer. And I'm like, or longer. I feel like that's the same break we got in Berserk where they're like, and they're on the boat. <laughs> See you in nine years. <laughs> <Amber. laughs> yeah. Like it's just, yeah. But that yeah, last but... issue, like, oof. Yeah. <laughs> I like to imagine all boat? the creators. No, <laughs> no. I, I like to imagine all these chronically late creators like George R. R. Martin and the Berserk guy and everyone just kind of sit together around a table. It's like, I'm going to make them wait this long. Oh, I'm going to make them wait this long. I've been yeah. waiting nine years. I've been making them wait. Nobody, yeah. nobody is going to top the Berserk guy on the making no. you wait. <laughs> He's on another hiatus right now. Like, oh. dude. To which everyone's terrified he might die soon. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so okay uh what was your favorite movie of 2018 and i'm not gonna say endgame i'm gonna say ant-man and the wasp because i thought it was great mm. if you're not you're like, out of all the movies that came out actually oh no yeah, hold on like- hold on definitely spider-man into the spider-verse but let's discount december for a moment <laughs> and look at the rest of the year okay but definitively spider-man yeah, yeah, yeah. into the spider-verse is number one right <laughs> um man <sighs> Maybe the Predator. No. <laughs> oh, that's like the worst movie You're of really the last funny. two years. <clears throat> hmm. uh, that Mister Rogers <clears throat> documentary came out this year. Won't you be my neighbor? That was pretty sweet and wholesome in a year yeah. when I think we needed it. I find it weird that you guys aren't picking a superhero movie. Am I the only one that Black Panther came oh, out? No. Yes, that's a really great. Spider-Man uh, beat that for me, and I still think Ant-Man and Wasp was better. But wow, I don't know about I... that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we gotta... I didn't get to see Overlord, and I'm really disappointed about that. Same. We didn't get to see. I didn't get to see uh, Bad uh, Times at the El Royale, so I can't say that. I really wanted to see that. I know. I'm sorry. Did Did you see that new Halloween movie? That one's pretty fun. If you like a no. good slasher. Uh, okay. Well, we missed a lot of movies. Oh, this so, year. so yeah. We now you're gonna be thinking about it, man. I gotta watch more movies. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Uh, uh, I enjoyed wow. Sorry to Bother You. That's my one art film of the year I had to take in because everyone was really raving about it. What is Sorry to Bother? Were. It's a weird, like, science fiction movie. It's an art film. I would explain it, but that would be ruining it. You just have to see it. Yeah. Okay. I'll legit look that up. 
Yeah, check yeah. it out. It's it's crazy. Is it's worth it? I yeah. don't know. I think so. <laughs> the trailer for me turned me off, but like it's the twists are interesting. So <laughs> oh, searching, searching was really good. I didn't see searching. Searching was really <laughs> fun. It's a concept everyone said before. Hey, let's have a movie that takes place entirely on a computer screen, but it works because John Cho is really really good, and he gets to flex as an actor, and it's a good mystery noir piece. Oh, I can, I can uh, we dug the quiet place that was three fun. bucks. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, <laughs> I I thought a quiet place was fine. I was yeah. I was not a big as big a fan as I thought I'm it was going to be box, of that movie. Bird box. I haven't seen that uh, yet. Tim, we, we gotta stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean with that bird box lady in it? Yeah. My, I heard that like like uh, the younger generations don't know who Sandra Bullock is, so they just keep calling <laughs> her the bird box lady. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah you're like, right. What? I actually heard that too. That is really funny. It's like, oh, Sandra Bullock. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I guess uh, it's really easy to say uh, freaking Infinity War. Like, it's really yeah. easy to say that because <clears throat> it was so good. So I've been um, waiting for it forever. Like, I Damn. out of all the movies that I saw, my reaction to Infinity War is unparalleled compared to like the rest of them. Oh, I'll give um, you that, yeah. So I was like, I mean, just in terms of experience in the theater, like mm-hmm. I could say Infinity War. Gotta say, I love Bumblebee though. I, I yeah, still gotta I see that. Natalie, that. I, 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 I want to see. It. Normally we stream gaming on Friday nights, but uh, this week there's yeah. so much extra streaming going on that we're kind of like, Ooh. let's just go out Friday night. Let's see a movie, get a yeah. dinner, like treat yourself. Treat yourself. It's, it's a. It's a <laughs> it's a reboot too, because like I heard it was supposed to be a prequel, but now it's become like a full reboot for it's them. Technically, also a prequel. It's like a it's right. like a, a preboot. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a C boot. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because that movie has John Cena in it. I think John Cena really flexed his acting muscles this year, not only in that one, but he was in Blockers, which I think was one of the funnier movies that came out this year. A sex positive sex comedy, which you don't get very often. Right. I got. I gotta tell you, this year was like filled with like movies that were either really good, eh, or right. like what? Yeah. Right. All right. Like I'm looking. Yeah. I'm like, we saw a lot of movies that were not great. No. <laughs> like Deadpool two. I liked Deadpool yeah. two. <laughs> it was fine. It was fun. I had, totally I had a good fine. time. It wasn't as tight as and the first one. You know what? One. Let's bring up this fight. Batman v Superman was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did you have to um, do with what? <laughs> I just want to fight with Sal. And Spider-Man oh, 2 is the greatest uh, Spider-Man movie ever to exist. We also saw the Meg. Oh, that was great. Yeah, I liked the Meg. Really? I expected so much I wanted, more. I wanted a Jaws China movie. I got a Jaws movie. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just expected so much more from that film. And I'm not like saying like it was going to be stellar and amazing. I was actually a little bored. Yeah. I, um, how do you make a movie with a giant shark and I'm bored? That movie legit uh-huh. feels like they went back in time for it, right down to Jason Statham being the leading man. It, where it's like, what what year is this? <laughs> yeah, right. I will say that. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Ready Player One came out this uh, year. Yeah, it I did. I watched I the dug first it. 15 minutes of it. It was fun. I, I I spent most of my time being like, oh, there's that character. Oh, look at that character. Oh, my gosh, it's that I one. I was like, and what's that tracer? <laughs> yeah, for me, exactly. I was like, is, for me, I was like, is that Spawn? <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that said, all the Spielberg stuff, like there were scenes like between the real human characters when they're like looking in the library, and I'm like, this is a cool movie. Uh, yeah, I'll agree with you on that. <laughs> This is a fun movie that's happening in here within this cartoon I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it was good. It, it was well executed. You know, it's one of those, like, Spielberg movies that's, like, no one will be talking about it in a year and a half. It'll be, like, like Avatar. Yeah. Um, Wait, Avatar, really? You realize everyone's still talking about that? They're coming out with more? No one's talking about Avatar. Avatar's what? getting sequels! It has a whole it, They've been saying that since Avatar. <laughs> And like I don't, I'm not, I don't care. Avatar four, don't like I'm not see seeing Avatar. Having, no, not dudes, but like the blue aliens having. Sex. I don't care. I don't care who they oh, are, whatever. what color they are. I'm not interested. This is 2019. Two blue dudes having sex. <laughs> right? Yeah. Why not? Well, it's like, I don't care. You're not that. No. No. I, I, I think I saw that backstage at a Blue Man Group concert one time. It changed yeah, right? my life. <laughs> you you um, know, it's the number one movie I wish I had seen this year, The Christmas Chronicles. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. I, 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 we'll see that at some point. Yeah. I want to, I want to see Kurt Russell be Santa Claus. I don't know yeah. why, but I do. Um, we, we also should have seen Mandy. We didn't yet. Yeah. Mm, yeah, the Nicolas Cage one. Um, we saw Solo, a Star Wars story, and that yeah. was. 
unnecessary. Oh um, god, a, a buddy of mine watched yeah. it. Like, it's not bad the second viewing. I'm like, but it wasn't good the first viewing. How did it get it's, better? But I'm not going to see a second. <laughs> like, is, it, it's... <laughs> is it is it bad? I fell asleep in the theater when they were doing the castle run because I did. Yeah, that's. I, I mean, like, I'm saying, but you should have left a mystery on that. I always thought it was a race, and I liked to think that it was a race. Same. I also yeah. thought it was a race. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I glad I'm not alone on that. It was, it, it's too bad because, like, the Stormtrooper designs and stuff, like, all the new designs were really cool. Uh, the guy who played Chewie did a great job. Mm. Um, I, I, like, that stuff with, uh, with, with Woody Harrelson and uh, uh, Sandy Newton. Newton were really cool. That's a whole uh, other movie, right? There. <laughs> right? Like, it's too bad it was, like, dark. And I don't mean, like, depressing. I mean, like, I couldn't see anything. <laughs> um, I re- Like, there were a lot of things I was like, this is really cool. Like, this is neat. Like, this is, genu- this is genuinely interesting. Um, I'll always no, no, no. want to see the... i always want to see the Lord and Miller version. I would like to see it now that we've seen Lord and Miller's version of Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, guys, real. we do need to hold up because a miss... A, missy... Missy, Missy? Missy Has gifted five subs to the channel. So wow. thank you so much for those subs. And also we haven't we haven't thanked yeah. that a Missy CC has also subscribed themselves a little while ago there. And uh, we had Silly Idea and Hipster Rick resub. So thank you guys so much. Hey. Crack a go great names. Hipster Rick. Um <laughs> But I, I think that's the place to leave off and... I mean we just kinda of name it up yeah. at this point. Uh, right, exactly. Like I didn't see Annihilation and I really wanted to see that. Mm-hmm. Same. I didn't get to talk about Action Point yet. <laughs> no, you didn't. I not. liked Action Point. No, not really. <laughs> Me too. Can we admit we like? I okay, like it. I, I thought it was a great jackass movie with a loose plot. I thought. I... See, I'm glad you mentioned. It. See, I liked it for a different reason. I like it because it's basically Johnny Knoxville who produced and wrote and did a bunch. He's secretly writing his life story here. Yeah. A jackass who hurts himself for money, trying to reconcile with his daughter that he loves. And I'm like, oh my god, he's writing his life story. Yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. terrible, but it wasn't great. You just gotta know what you're going into. It's a jackass. Tiff and I actually plot. went to Action Park. Huh? Yeah, I was gonna say, if you know the history of the actual yeah, park. Yeah, that too. I yeah, actually know the points. actual history of Action Park as well. Yeah, we went there. It's it's 20 minutes from my house. <laughs> and crack it, seriously. Thank you so much, Flash Bull, for that yeah. gifted sub right there. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna start winding down the episode right here. Uh, you can find Sal and Tiffany over at Comic Pop and Comic Pop TV on Twitch. They talk about all kinds of comic books and stuff like that. You can also find Cape Joel at his channel, Cape Joel, where he talks about comic books and basically reviews them on a weekly basis. And if you don't know who I am, mm-hmm. I'm Benny. I'm known as the Comic Story, and you can find me on my YouTube channel, Comic Storian, or right here on the Eligible Monster Twitch channel on a quite frequent basis. So. Uh, yeah, uh, real quick rundown, guys. The stream will be live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. We'll be uh, streaming Warframe. We're going to be hosted by the Warframe channel. So it's going to be a big, big day Ooh. for us. A lot of a cool accomplishments. Ooh. Hoping to see as many people as we can out there. Go Canadian creators. Yeah, Friday morning. Uh, well, Thursday, we're going to be uh, doing a comics experiment live here, along with three beers and a topic. Sal, you liked that show. And, uh, yeah, it was fun. And we're also going to be doing some more gaming podcasts. And Friday morning, I'll be playing Final Fantasy XIV or Subnautica. You guys can vote on that in the Discord. And I'll probably just do what I want anyway. But hey, you vote. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget to check us out for the rest of the week. And the weekly poll will return in two weeks right here on this channel and on the YouTube channel afterwards. It is located. It will be January 22nd. Wait, I don't think I'll be in town. Yes, I will. Someone will host it. It'll be fun. January 22nd. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for everyone who stuck around since the Final Fantasy XIV team stream. And I will see you guys all real soon right here at the Eligible Monster channel. See you guys tomorrow morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good night. <laughs>